Good afternoon. Today is the 5th of February and uh, here we are once again at uh, Baron's Classic Car Auctions at Marchwood near Southampton. We're going to be having a look at their um, February sale collection. Not all the cars that uh, I'll be filming were actually in the sale and also not all the cars that are listed are actually here. But we'll be doing our best to sort of try to have a look at everything we can. As always, I always ring up before I come and just make sure it's okay to film. Um, I know a lot of you are very, very fond of watching these videos, and I'm very fond of making them, so that's a good combination, isn't it? We'll start off with this, uh, this Maxi. This is a really, really late Maxi. Production finished in the middle of 1981, and this is actually an 82 registered car. It's the base model. It's the uh, facelifted Maxi 2. But it's only the L, but by this stage all the Maxis have a 1750 engine. I think this car is in need of a bit of a clean. It actually looks a bit worse on, um, uh, you know, when I'm seeing it here, it does on the video. The video made it look actually a bit better than it is, but this is a hydrogas Maxi, so that's going to need checking as well. I think actually they've left this open. I imagine these are some sort of spares or something for the car in there. I'll try the other side. Might as well have a look at the back of it whilst we're here. That big hatchback. Strangely enough, they never thought to fit a rear wiper to these. I don't really know why. I don't really understand that. So we've got a fog light that was required for all cars, I think, after the middle of 1981, from, from memory. And some reversing lights in the bumper. I've driven a Maxi, actually. I drove a um, 72 that one of my friends owns, Mr Partridge. Look at that. Oh, yes. The Rusted Rover logo's on there. And they've, there's an Austin Rover badge on this, and by this stage they weren't even, even called the Austin Maxi, it was called the Maxi. But uh, yeah, interior doesn't look too bad, lots of spare bits in there for something else. So it, it needs maybe a bit more regression. Apparently it actually drove to the auction house, so it still drives, it just needs a bit of cleaning up and things maybe. But that's an interesting start, we'll uh, see other interesting things in there no doubt. As I've confirmed with the auction house previously, if cars don't sell at a given auction, you do get to re-enter it for free. I think it's at least once. So uh, I think this car's been re-entered. It's a 2002 BMW E39 5 Series, specifically a 525 SE. Oh yes, we've got to save the estimate on the Maxi. Uh, that one is uh, estimated at uh, one to two thousand pounds. This BMW is estimated at four to five thousand pounds. So you can see it's obviously been brought recently with the UK sticker. Haven't got a beige leather interior, I'm afraid. Is this, is this unlocked? If it is, we want to be able to take a look. Oh, there we are. Oh, it's got a manual gearbox. Excellent viewers. It's nothing we like to see. Firstly, I prefer a beige leather interior, but. Uh, most of you know my feelings about that, so just shut that properly, there we go. That's quite nice. Ooh. Yeah, that might need addressing at some point, viewers. Um, my camera autofocus isn't particularly good on this, which is a bit annoying, but there we go. Hmm. Also spotted something else that I uh, think might have made the thumbnail for the video. This exceptionally rare 1993 Audi V8. Look at this, viewers. Look at that. My camera is um, absolutely, utterly spoiling it as well, which is which is great. So yeah, they're very, very rare. This is a late one. It's a '93. It looks a bit like an Audi Hundred, you know, the sort of very smooth shaped one from the 1980s. But um, I can't remember how much in common actually that has with one of these. But that is very. Very nice views. I love the kind of um, the back end of this. It reminds me of that 200 Quattro that uh, Timothy Dalton drove in the Living Daylights. So it's like a similar colour to this as well. And yes, <laughs> it's got a nice leather interior. I don't know what colour you call this. Um, it's not. I don't think it's beige exactly. It's sort of olive colour. Uh, no airbag in this. I think we've still got a Procon 10 um, safety system in this car. 
but I'm going to help myself to have a little seat in here. Mmm. Oh, Ooh, cruise control and climate control and all kinds of other delights. Look at all these gauges. Yes, auto focus. Please work for me properly. Thank you. Yes, that's, that's very nice. Viewers. I quite like this. It's even better than that as well. Ooh, someone's left the bonnet open. I wonder if we can uh, take a look at uh, the engine underneath. I'm afraid I simply can't work out how to put the bonnet on this car. Um, yeah, that's not that's not very good. Uh, I do apologise to you, so I'll have to move on and look at uh, ooh, something else. How about this 1970 Lotus Land 2 Plus 2? I might be wrong, but I think we've actually seen this uh, seen this before. Yeah, the glass fibre. I don't think it's crazy or something. This, this paint, this paint's not very good. Yeah, you can kind of see it. It's got little bubbles all over it. So obviously it's glass fibre. It's crazy a little bit there. Mechanically, this car's this car's it says it's very good. Um, but obviously, check the bodywork. It's a very old car. This anyway. It's probably going to need some. Uh, it's probably going to need some uh, um, attention. It is only two star paintwork on the auction guide, so that's actually not very good. Yeah, the bodywork needs a full respray of blisters and cracks. Have a look inside. Not very common, these plus twos. There we go. Wow. Oh, that smells fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. It really just does need um, full respray, doesn't it? Which isn't... It's not looking interior, though. It doesn't, it doesn't look too bad. Plus two... So it came towards the end of the land production. It was sold alongside the original one until both ended, I think, in 74. The most famous use of this I can think of is a uh, episode of the Avengers, which is called uh, On Beside an Old Lace, which was filmed in 67 along with an episode called Have Gone to All Haddle, where Linda Force and Drives read one of these. Talking of uh, British sports cars, from the 50s and 60s, how about this MGA? This MGA is a 59. It's uh, been imported from America. Since then, it's been converted to right-hand drive. I think we have seen this before as well. Even got these uh, sort of door handle type I don't know how that works. You pull that out. Yes, you do. There we go. Because these originally, whoop, that would not have had an exterior door handle at all. That's probably quite a good idea to fit those, actually. I don't know whether or not that instrument um, panel is completely original. Someone who uh, is more familiar with these will have to will have to say. So we need to do the um, estimates on these. So if he lands up to 30, 13,000, 16,000, obviously we know, having been to his auction before, that these estimates sometimes mean something, sometimes they don't. This MGA is up for about the same, actually, between 13 and 15,000. You can actually see on, on camera, it's even more obvious in real life, that the paint does need a bit of attention. It needs mopping back for one thing, and then there's slightly different shades of red on it, but it doesn't look too bad, actually, that. Something that's um, a little bit different is this, uh, it's this Corvette here. It's a C4 Corvette. I think this uh, must have been imported at some point. I don't think we ever officially sold these ones over here. Let me just find the uh, correct page for this. Just hold on a second. So yeah, this is a 1994 model. It was originally um, imported from Japan. Another glass fibre car like that Elan is, but this, uh, this glass fibre is in much, much better condition. There we can see the, uh, it's a 5.7 litre V8 in these. Can't say that I know an awful lot, lot about these. It's got an MOT actually until next, uh, next July. Tires look very good. I'm trying to fall over things last time around here. See if we can open the driver's door. Sometimes the cars in here are open, sometimes they're not. We might as well have a look in this one. Ooh, excellent. Ah. There we go. Look at all that 90s American switch gear in there, which, to be honest, although they didn't necessarily feel very good, often they actually last a long time in all these old cars. Put up headlamps. 
there's a certain type of person who would absolutely love to uh, to drive one of these. I'm not so sure as it's me. Um, I don't get on very well with these um, kind of uh, left-hand drive cars in Britain, personally. But uh, there we go. What's the estimate on this? Nine to eleven thousand pounds. Seems pretty fair to me. More Chevy action here. This enormous 1996 Chevy Suburban. The estimate on this is between eight and ten thousand pounds. Apparently, it's only had one owner uh, who originally lived in um, North America. It was imported in about 1999. 5.7 litre V8 in this, as well as the Corvette, I think. See if this actually opens up because I think we've got a surprise in here, viewers. Oh yes, a beige leather interior. I do like a nice beige leather interior. Look at the spec in this, it's got electric seats. Have the air conditioning of course, like all these nice American cars mainly do. There's the switch for the four wheel drive and things, let's focus, there we go, that's better. Automatic gear lever on the steering column of course. Ooh, and it's got a supplemental inflatable restraint. Always known as an airbag to uh, you and I. It's the LT model. Look at all this space in here. I mean, it's, it's just the middle row. We've got another row in there as well. So it's actually an eight-seater. That's crazy. I mean, I think it's... A little bit too big for the average suburban <laughs> garage, but uh, that's uh, interesting anyway. Well, our old friend the uh, Camaro's here as well, 71 Camaro RS split bumper, which is a Z28 tribute, restored nine years ago in the United States of America. I don't know why this hasn't sold, it's very, very nice. I mean, we've been in here before, haven't we? We've been in empty and looked inside. It's an auto. I'm getting sort of uh, Rockford Files vibes off this view. Uh, the Rockford Files cars were much later than this. I think they started at around a 73 or 74. And they were actually the uh, Firebirds rather than the Camaros. But the um, body shape is quite similar on these. But yeah, the paint looks really good on this. Um, what's the estimate on this one? between 22 and 26,000 pounds. Not really an expert in American cars viewers, but uh, yeah, it looks pretty fair to me. So, this is 2005 BMW 630i with the, um, the bangle design, I think this, this were. Estimate on this is between four and a half and five and a half thousand pounds. I'm not sure if this is beige or cream. It's sort of on the borderline. It, it actually looks like a nice colour on camera, but it does in real life. It's more sort of a yellow, yellow shade. But yeah, 630. I think this was the um, most basic engine you could um, get with one of these. But certainly not basic um, specification at all, really. Again, I think we've uh, possibly seen this one um, before, haven't we? But it uh, looks like we've got the early version of the iDrive down there as well. Amazingly, uh, despite all this sort of technology, it's got a normal handbrake in it, which is uh, remarkable, really. Also a familiar friend is this um, 84 Datsun 280ZX. Um, I think we've seen this quite a few times before, viewers. It just needs a little bit of mechanical work to finish, apparently. It's not quite you can register yet, it's a South African import. It's had the Nova carried out and it's now ready. It needs an MOT. Where are you going to find one of these? Here? Particularly in this sort of condition. I, I don't, I mean, it needs a, it's a little bit of tidying up, really. I can't see any sort of major rust or anything. Actually, the bodywork looks very good. Um, four tyres, hammer it repairs, leaky brake caliper, driver's seat insecure, windscreen damage, piston lights not working, stop lights not working, windscreen washer's not working, CV gauge split. Yeah, no, no corrosion concerns. So that's the sort of list of stuff that they said that needs doing. And uh, this is up for a guy price of between seven and nine thousand pounds. It's quite tempting, that to be honest. I, I quite like that. The 
this is a bit of a rarity. It's a 1966 Jaguar Mark II 2.4. Now, originally this was registered in Hong Kong, but as you can see from the plate, there's something funny going on here because that plate does not relate to the age of the car at all. In the 1970s, when cars were imported over here, as this was in 1973, it's generally given a plate around the time that the car came into the country. So that's actually a sort of thing, that's a 71, 72 plate, so maybe it was given one slightly earlier than the actual date of import. Um, but it was put into a garage in 1987, as you can see there's a tax disc here, um, which ran out in November 1986, and it's been in the garage since 87. So there's also the original Hong Kong service book, original Hong Kong book pack, and the original toolbox. This car's got no reserve on it whatsoever. Let's have a look at the um, look at the interior. It, it needs restoration. This it needs a lot. And ooh, 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 is that a vinyl or leather interior? Ooh. Oh wow. Yeah, it's got to be leather, beige leather. Mmm. So yeah, I, I have no idea how much this is worth. I'll just um, see if the door opens. Yeah, right hand handbrake. Just be careful you don't paint it white. Because if you paint it white, you might end up falling over a cliff, which is what they used to do in all those old ITC series, wasn't it? But yes, it's, um, it's very interesting. They do get some interesting stuff here, don't they? So this is a 1966 Ford Mustang. Guy price of this is between 22 and 25,000 pounds. So, was imported about three years ago to this country. And it looks very good, to be honest. It's got the uh, American racing wheels. Let's have a look inside, shall we? Looks like it's open. Wow. This is really nice. That's really, really nice, actually. It's not really my bag particularly. I'm not. I'm not massively into Mustangs, but I mean, if you if you were, that would be a really good example. So, viewers, the much understood uh, V6 engine Ford Cougar. This is a 1999, built over in America. I think it's somewhat based on a Mark II Mondeo platform, but I'm not sure if it's exactly the same. These are very rare now, and uh, there's a reason for that, and that's chronic rust. Uh, this one seems remarkably good. Estimate is between one and a half and three thousand pounds. Let's uh, take a look inside if it's open. It's got a very different dash in it, actually, from um, Mark II Mondeo. With all the uh, Ford Contour, Mercury Mystique, if you're in America. Those dials, though, look quite familiar. Same Duratec V6 2.5 litre. This one's a manual. I think we recognise that radio from uh, some other 90s Ford Don't We viewers. I think we do know that. This is pretty good actually for one of these. It's, it looks really good. Look at this little Cougar logo there. Headlamps aren't too bad. They could probably do with a little bit of a buff, but they aren't too bad. It's not very come very far actually, originally supplied by Ford in Bournemouth. So yeah, not travelled very far. EL was a local plate back in the day to Bournemouth. I think it looks very nice. I'd like to drive one of these actually. Someone's also very sensibly um, fitted parking sensors to this because the rear visibility doesn't look very good. So um, another one of these uh, American cars, this time a right hand drive one. 1998 Jeep Cherokee XJ4 litre limited. We've actually had one of these cars on sensible second-hand classics, uh, which was, uh, I think, uh, last year. Mr. Coleman, rubbish mechanic, actually owns one of these. Uh, green one. Have a look at the interior. I hope this is open. So this is a facelifted XJ. We only got um, these, I think, in Britain for about 1993, and then they finished. In 2001. This is a facelifted one. Be careful, there we go. I don't think I'll actually climb in. I think we'll just 
sort of shone from here. Yeah, just on my lometer on it. I must say, this does look really, really good. Estimate on this is uh, between about nine and ten thousand pounds. That's that's in really nice condition, actually. Yes, yeah, someone's really looked after it. They are climbing in value. The, the, these are appreciating classics. They're a lot cheaper over in America because there are obviously a lot more of them over there. But uh, yeah, it looks nice. Portsmouth plate on this, so it's you know it's not gone too far in its life towards ended up back here. Let's move on. So this is something very very unusual. This is 1998 BMW Z3, but it's um, got sort of like a body kit on it from a company called Tribute Automotive, and it's the Z300S body kit. Estimate on it is between 11 and 13 thousand pounds. It's got an MOT until September this year colour is Connaught Green. I think after the Connaught um, racing company from back in the day. So they've even changed the door handles on this. So it's only, it's only got a 1.9 litre engine in this. It's only the four cylinder. Let's see how these door handles work. There we go. So we've got some bits in here that are clearly still Z3 items but they've worked very very hard to disguise everything. I think you can actually just take these um, body panels off if you want to just restore it back to a Z3 but you probably wouldn't want to do that. Look at those instruments over there as well. So yeah I mean, it's, a, it's a very kind of comprehensive kit this. Look at these wire wheels. I mean it's not it's not exactly what I would personally have myself but if you want something that's a lot cheaper than you know the sort of Aston Martin and Ferrari races of the 50s it looks just like it then that might be an option. So our old friend, the uh, 2004 Mercedes-Benz CLK55 AMG. I think this is the A209 shape from memory. This AMG model is the most powerful one. I think that there were maybe engines that uh, were similar to this, but this is the most powerful one, I think 55 AMG. Again, this, it's not particularly to my taste, this colour scheme. Um, I'm not really fond of black wheels, personally, but because it matches the interior, I think this is quite kind of tasteful in the way. Why this thing hasn't sold, I have absolutely no idea. Um, it looks really clean, there's not there's a mark on it. This little chappy's still here as well, this... Uh, 1970 Volkswagen Splitty Combi Samba Replica. It's, the work on this is a very, very high standard. It's at a between 34, 38,000 pounds. I mean, if this was a real Samba, it would be worth an awful lot more than this. And it's been done very recently. It's a very late one of these, I think it was probably made in South Africa, something like that, right-hand drive. Since we're here, we might as well see if we can actually look in the back. No, maybe the front. Oh no, it's actually, it's actually locked. Oh well, you've seen it, but maybe on previous videos, we've actually, uh, you know, come in and um, taken a look at this before, so... There we go, but yeah, it's, that's to a very, very high standard, if it's that sort of thing you're after. 2004, Toyota MR2 Roadster. Now, I have driven one of these. Actually, I drove this um, early version of this car about a year ago on sensible second-hand classics. Uh, the car had been from the same family, from new. Uh, this one is also a one-owner car. And uh, between one and a half thousand and three thousand pounds, apparently this has done just 16,000 miles from new. It looks really nice. It needs a little bit of a clean inside. The engine compartment lid is open. There we go. Yeah, kind of a bit difficult to work on. So you have to take these uh, braces out to do stuff. But very good engines, actually. These uh, chain cam, they're quite reliable. I quite enjoy driving one, although the suspension is very firm and made my camera mount jump all over the place. Something else that I've uh, covered on um, Sensible Second Classic before is a Rover 100. This is a 1960, 
the one I drive was a, a 61, and this is estimated between four and five thousand pounds, which is sounds more like a classics money. I'm always amazed that these old Rover hundreds and generally the, P, uh, the P4s are not worth all than they are. Maybe it's because there's a few of them around. I, I don't really know, but they've never really captured the hearts of um, sort of classic car bars like some cars have. It's a bit of a shame. Like that one seems to be locked. I like this colour combination. I think that's that's quite nice. It, there is some pitting on the chrome, but this isn't a concourse car. Looks like a sort of good usable one, to be honest. We can go have a look in here. There we go. Yeah, we've got wood, we've got green leather, and the shepherd's crook handbrake, and the scary gearbox that doesn't have synchro mesh on first, and the wheel that's 4 to 6 turns locked to lock and is very heavy. But it's very, very comfortable. It's a very comfortable car. Mm. Oh, I can smell that leather as well. That much <laughs> to you alone. Right, that Maxi's warming up outside. Um, we'll have a look at this Wolseley 1500 whilst we're at it. Guy priced is between three and four thousand two hundred and fifty pounds. Um, and it is two tone green. 1960. Obviously, very similar to a Morris Minor, but much fancier than one of those. With a much larger engine. Smells good. I wonder if you've got a brake servo in one of these. It's had a modern stereo fitted in it. And yeah, lots of lots of space. Very similar steering wheel to the Morris Minor of the period. Let's see if this door's open. Yes, it is. Hmm. Lots of wood. I think we've got some uh, leather in here as well. Excellent. Now we've got some really kind of rare, unusual stuff. This is a 1946 Morris Y van. It was used by a uh, dairy, um, but till sort of mid 60s, I think. I've never seen one of these before, I don't think. I don't really honestly know much about them. I don't know anything about them. Let's see if the door. You lock it from the inside, don't you? Well, this is somewhere in Buckinghamshire. See if this door's open. There we go. It's very careful. Look at this. Wow. It shows how, how much vans have kind of come on. <laughs> However long it is, about you know, 75 years. So the van's up for between five and a half and seven and a half thousand pounds. This is another Morris, it's a Cowley from 929. It's a uh, two-seat tour of Dickey in good condition. Now there are a few cars here that are from the same collection. Unfortunately, someone's passed away and uh, these cars have ended up at the auction. The price on this isn't very much money, actually. It's between five and 10,000 pounds. I mean, it's very difficult to value something like this. Um, where do you where do you start? I mean, <laughs> how many of these come up for sale? Don't really fancy travelling in there, viewers. Um, it looks a little bit um, bit scary, so we won't do that. So we'll have a look at this other Morris here. This is a this is an Oxford. The other one's a Cowley. This is a 28. We've also got a dicky seat in here. Again, uh, estimate between five and ten thousand pounds. Zero looks good, just needs a little bit of a clean. Again, um, ooh, not my favourite to <laughs> do travelling in there, to be honest. Also got this Alvis here. Alvis Firefly Cross and Alice Tora. We have with Dickie seats. But the gentleman who, I think, owned all these cars um, was very, very much into these 30s and 20s open tours of the dicky seats, wasn't he? This is a little bit more than the uh, Morris. This is between 20 and 30,000 pounds. Yeah, it's got the side screens and everything in here as well. Battery's actually, um, battery's actually down there and there. Which is interesting. So 
we've got the um, eagle in front of here as well. Just a beautiful piece of craftsmanship, and you know, it's um, sure somebody will really want to just get that back into you know, um, sort of driving condition, take it to shows and things. 1986 Mercedes 300SL convertible, that's between seven and a half and ten thousand pounds. So this will be on the kind of lower end of um, of this, particularly because, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Ooh. Yeah. Um, replace lower door and wing rib panels, repairs to outer seals around jacket points, repairs to upper There's ring wings on there, but rear wings, yeah. If somebody wants a project, I think this might be somewhere to start, but ooh, yeah. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see how much this features. Got some more Mercedes action coming up here now as well. 1990 um, 300 SE here, that's between nine and ten thousand pounds. I think they call this a W126 model. Interesting. Mercedes Benz Great West Road. I wonder if those are the original dealer plates actually. Would be in Brentford in London that would come from in that case. Mmm. Well, that does look really rather nice. Looks in very nice original condition, this actually. Next week we've got another S-Class, if I can actually find the right thing on here. Yes, a W116 this time, this is a 79, it is a um, 280 SE. Proper sort of for eyes only spec isn't it this? Just been recommissioned. So this one to this between seven and nine thousand pounds. Interesting how this one's worth a little bit more than the other one. Yeah, it's, it's locked, isn't it? Never mind. Ooh, headlamp wiper action as well. Yeah. I just hope that Roger Moore doesn't push me off a cliff if I sit in it. More percent baby's action. More sense. More Mercedes Benz action and also more beta from interiors. Views. But that MTB in the corner has been started, that's why we've got the noise. That looks like it's locked. Oh no, it's not. Yes. So, handbrake is on, it's the old fashioned type. This is a W126 420 SEC, so it's the coupe version of that 1990 S Class over there. It's got an economy meter as well, but mmm. <laughs> There's a particular reason we like this one, viewers. A beige leather interior with wood. Mmm, it smells nice too. I do like a nice beige leather interior. What if we, the seatbelt butler's working on this as well? This is a seatbelt butler. Whereas you've got to reach back all the way, which is a bit undignified, perhaps. How much is this one up for? Between eight and a half and eleven thousand pounds. You know, honestly, I don't know why this hasn't sold yet. It's very nice. Ooh, viewers, 1968 Jaguar S-Type 3.4 with overdrive, and it's a manual. Look at the colour of this, that is absolutely beautiful. Got the MDB there with the background running out of noise that you can hear. Oh, viewers, that is stunning. Let's take a look inside, this is open. Well, no, it's not. It's locked. It's a shame. Yeah, with overdrive. Steering wheel's not original, but it doesn't really matter, does it? It looks very nice. That is that's an absolutely amazing looking car. <sighs> wow. It's this side open, perhaps. No. Oh, well, well, we'll have a look at the MGB whilst we're here. So this one's an older restoration. It was restored in 97. Estimates between four and six thousand pounds. So yes, these cars are still in sensible second-hand classics territory. So it's 73. The is pretty good actually. We have a fish mouth grill on this one. Um, I think that's a little bit later. 
to be honest. Paintwork's actually not that bad. You can see that the little bit of rust is bubbling through. The colour looks a lot better on video than it does in real life, actually. It's a bit of a sort of more kind of teal colour. But yeah, it's very nice. Also got this uh, little Puma here. This is the 1.7, it's a 99. Early 99 on an S. It's similar to the one that was here with some of the sales at the end of last year. It's not exactly the same though. This one actually might be uh, a bit nicer. We'll have a look at the Forerunner in a second. This has been, gosh, this has been around, hasn't it, for a long time in the uh, the auction house. It needs a bit of a clean, and it's pretty perfect. There's no there's no rust around here on the arches or anything. That's very very good actually. If you're looking for a nice Puma. So the old V6 Forerunner, 1994. This has uh, been up for sale quite a few times at the auction. I think it's locked so we can't get in, but it's, it's a three litre V6. Estimate between three and a half and five and a half thousand pounds. And uh, unsurprisingly, I quite like that viewers. Love Mercedes here, 1991 W124. Um, this is a 260E. This actually is up for no budget reviews money. It's estimated between 500 and 1500 pounds. Paint's a bit sort of dull on this side. It's probably had a respray at some point. But I mean, if it's no budget reviews money, does it really matter? Let's have a look at the more detailed description here. So, uh, there's no MOT and the car's currently sawn. It needs finishing off near side. A rear door colour to boot, full size alloy spare. In April 22, it it uh, has actually had um, service. New water pump, wall cooling hoses, new radiator and drive belt. So there's some history with it. Didn't really could pick these up so cheaply still. Obviously, he hasn't got an MOT, so I mean, I mean, who knows what else needs doing. This an early P38 Range Rover. This is a 4.6 HSE, which I think was the uh, top of the range actually at the uh, at the time. And it's dark green with a beige leather interior. It's only done 39,000 miles. Estimate of this is between 4,500 and 6,000 pounds. So this has had some has had some work done to it, hasn't it, over the years? Unlike P38s I've seen before, it doesn't look rusty. Obviously, does everything work? I don't know. It's also locked, which is a bit of a shame, but you can just about see the colour of the interior. Actually, it looks better on video, as you know, it's usually the case. Just mine up my way whilst we're reversing over here. Yeah, I love the colour of that. That's not really a surprise, though, to anybody, is it, viewers? So there we are, the end of another slightly shambolic shuffle around Baron's classic car auction. You see uh, a hive of activity today and uh, I'd better get on my way home before I buy anything. So thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment below and uh, we'll see you again soon for more incorrect information.